Hi, I'm Bill Gaines, host of The Outdoor View, the place where we educate, connect, and learn to protect our outdoor traditions. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of chatting with a very dear friend of mine who happens to also be a renowned nature and wildlife photographer and an outdoor television personality and currently coordinates and guides absolutely amazing African photo safaris. My dear friend, Jeff Engel. How are you doing today, Jeff? Thanks, Bill. It's really a pleasure to be on your show. We've go back a long way and you are really a class act and you're a smart guy. And I know your passion you have for California and the wildlife and nature of California. I know that as a fact. Yeah, we've, we've shared some of that together quite a few times over the years. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll save that for another interview, but I, I do want to talk with you about that stuff, too, because we got a lot of great stuff. Yes, a lot of experiences together. Right, a absolutely. Well, hey, today, yeah, I really want to chat with you about your African photo safaris. I mean, I, I've seen some of your photos. We're going to show some of them here in a few minutes. They're absolutely phenomenal, Jeff. Well, thank I'm, you. Thank you. You are certainly a world-class photographer, and then your ability Thank to you. share that photography opportunity with people that did the tenure safaris, I mean, that, that's, that's a, a, a chance of a lifetime. It really is. Well, I love sharing the passion of nature photography and wildlife photography to other people. And there are a few better places in the entire world than to share that passion than Africa, South Africa. Right, right. In fact, your background is one of the many photos that we're going to talk about today, right? That I mean, would be a morning, a typical morning sunrise. Because of the lack of ozone in Africa, there are dramatic and incredible sunrise and sunsets. Wow. Yeah. I, that, and I know we're going to look at a few of them today, but that picture right there is, it, it's a pretty amazing. <laughs> I'll tell you, it really is pretty amazing. So well, thank you. Well, Jeff, I, why don't we go through a few of your photos? Sure. People are just going to be amazed by these. And, right. and I, I know people are going to be interested in, in joining and going along with you on one of these photo safaris. So we'll let them know how they can do that at the end of this interview. But in the meantime, let's show them some of the spectacular images that you've taken. Well, thank you. Sure. Hey, Jeff, let, let's start off with this one. I don't know if this is Africa or not. It's a amazing picture but let's talk a little bit about this one just to kick things off well you are right bill this is not africa i took this picture about a week and a half ago in southeast wisconsin it's a snowy owl and it's unusual to have snowy owls in wisconsin this time of year so i sent this photograph to a head biologist of the wisconsin dnr and he analyzed it and said this is a one-year-old male snowy owl and since the males do not breed the first year of their life, he's in no hurry to get back to the Arctic Circle. But it was just a very fortunate photograph. I just love the eyes. And it was a, a fortunate situation where he was on a perch and he happened to fly sort of to me. And I was very fortunate and blessed to get this shot right here. So this is in Wisconsin, not Africa. But it, it's, I don't care where it is. It's a pretty amazing photo. Lucky shot. I appreciate you, uh, you you sharing that with us. Well, let, let's travel about eight to 9,000 miles from Wisconsin. Let's take a look at some of these phenomenal images you've taken in Africa. Well, here's guys? a tree called a, a baobab tree. Bill, any idea how old you think that tree might be? I don't know, but it's got a really impressive trunk on it. That's for sure. It's about 2,000 years old. And we look at this tree when we take our people to Africa and we actually have them put the palm of their hand on the trunk of this living tree and say, how does it feel to put your hands and touch and feel something that's living and breathing at 2000 years old? Quite extraordinary. Sure is. That brings up an interesting question. I mean, this is obviously, there's a lot of things on earth that are millions of years old, but nothing that's living that's that old, right? <laughs> I mean, so what is the oldest living thing on earth? I would think this quite possibly could be that, right? It's, it's right up there. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Wow. Here are two teenage elephants. There's a bull teenage elephant and a female, and they are literally playing and flirting with each other in the water. Uh, 
elephants are extremely playful, especially at this age. And they are so fun to watch and photograph. Now, that's a pretty amazing photo. Yeah, you can tell it's kind of like teen love. It's like puppy love going on, right? It is. It's exactly puppy love. Look at the expression on their smiles on their faces. It, it's just a neat photograph showing the, the intricacy of the animal complex of their mind and the emotions that animals do have. That's amazing. Great photo, Jeff. Great photo. Yeah. This would be a typical sunrise. Uh, we spend a lot of time every morning and every evening getting sunrises and sunsets. And everyone seems to be extraordinary. Along with that, we do quite a bit of cellular photography or nighttime photography. And the Milky Way is so extremely bright. You see the oranges and the greens and the blues, the gases from the space. But people say that's the best, clearest Milky Way they've ever seen because of the clear skies. I can imagine. I can absolutely imagine. And, and you've got no light from big cities or anything, you know. No there. lights. Might wow. be a hut a mile away. That's about it. That's amazing. Amazing. Here's an example of a water hole. We spend some time at a water hole and we go bill in the months of July and August for a couple of reasons. That's the middle of their winter, Southern hemisphere. So the middle of their winter means in the morning you'll wear a light fleece jacket and by 10 or 11 o'clock you're wearing shorts or a short sleeve shirt. But we positioned ourselves in this water hole and one of our dreams of our, of our group was to get zebras lined up in a row so we sat for quite a while. First, we had one zebra come, and then two, and then three showed up. Then they all ran away. Then they came back one at a time until finally we had all these line up perfectly. And the people in the vehicle and all around our group just were getting thrilled to have a once in a lifetime shot like this. That's a pretty amazing shot. Everybody got the same shot. Yeah, that's awesome. Another spectacular sunrise. Uh, it, it is wonderful. It's also interesting. Uh, in fact, this is one of the usual sunrises that we have. But when it comes to sunsets, we kind of have a tradition. You may have heard of the expression sundowner. Mm -hmm. Well, when the sun just hits the horizon in the afternoon or evening, we stop what we're doing and we say sundowner. And that's a moment that we appreciate the full entire day and appreciate the nature. So it's a kind of a fun tradition that we have. Giraffes, we see a lot of giraffes. We spend a great deal of time in Kruger National Park. Kruger is about a 8 million acre unfenced area that's completely natural and all wild. And that's where we see the elephants and most of the animals. This picture would be a typical giraffe scene late afternoon, golden hour with the appropriate light. So made for a pretty interesting shot. Hippos, who doesn't like to see a hippo? They're dangerous on land, but again, we're in vehicles most of the time and you can get relatively close to them and they're just fun to watch. Uh, they're very, very animated. They're big bloating things in the water. And oftentimes there'll be turtles or cranes on top of their back. It's really fun to get photographs as well. Okay, Bill, here's a good question for you and your audience. We have an ostrich egg, the larger one, and a chicken egg. What would you guess? How many chicken eggs equal one, uh, one ostrich egg, Bill? Uh, I'll say 10. You're very close, 12 chicken eggs equal one ostrich egg. It's a fun, fun fact for having breakfast with your friends when you get back home. Tell you what, if you had a four egg ostrich omelet, how would well, you come up big I had a one egg ostrich omelet and a, the skillet was about this big. <laughs> oh, that, that's funny. We see a number of these. This is called a kudu, K-U-D-U. It's a graceful, elegant looking antelope type of an animal. And we see a fair number of these. This picture was also taken in low light called the golden hour again. 
And it's, it's great for photography, these animals. Beautiful, beautiful animals. Thank you. Another glorious, wonderful sunrise. How, what a great way of starting a day, Bill, and to see this. Another classic example of uh, trees in the morning sun. If you look at the smaller tree in the back, does that sort of look like a hoopy Indian dancing to some degree? Some people have said that. You it see does that? now that you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. But this would be not an unusual thing to see in South Africa in, in the morning. Wow. <clears throat> One of the great things about the photo safari, Bill, is that we have a chance of seeing a great variety of animals. And many people, including myself, love to document and photograph animal behavior or animal encounters. And there's a classic example of a mother giraffe with her baby, a close encounter, an intimate encounter. Here's a fish eagle. It's the equivalent to our bald eagle, about the same size. They both love to go fishing and similar, similar colors. Uh, but it's a graceful bird. We see a number of these called the fish eagle. Yeah, you can definitely tell the resemblance to our bald eagle here. Yes. Ah, a leopard. This is a wild leopard. And everything we see are all wild animals. Uh, we try to see leopards and lions, but we are in the bush and it's wild. And it's not a 100% guarantee uh, people say, well, I want to see a giraffe or I want to see a leopard or a lion. Well, that would be a zoo. We're in the wild. We make every effort to see them. And we usually do. This particular animal, uh, we were in a vehicle. It jumped off a bank and went down. So we drove down the road about 50 yards. And one of the guides had a good feeling that that leopard might pop back up. And the guide was exactly correct. The leopard came over the bank and went on top of a log, and we were all ready for this shot right here. That look, at the, look at the eyes, the penetrating eyes, Bill. Absolutely amazing. I've seen quite a few pictures of leopards over the years. I don't think I've seen one that spectacular. Thank you. We see lots of zebras. They are personally one of my favorite things to photograph because they are very animated and they're extraordinarily affectionate. So they're oftentimes having their heads over the back or licking each other or being very close to each other, but it's just a, a great animal to photograph. Yeah, they're pretty animals, they really are. This is called a ground hornbill. They are highly endangered, but we know an area where they live they stand about three, three and a half feet off the ground. But look at those eyelashes. Right. That would be a Maybelline commercial for sure. That is a classic photo. Looks like it's almost got a little bit of turkey in it. You know? <laughs> it does. And of course, they have the long eyelashes for what reason? Well, protects their eyes from the tremendous sun. Amazing. A neat bird to see. Absolutely. Here's a line that we came across laying in the grass. And the coloration of the line and the grass are very similar. This one happened to poke its head out and all of us in the vehicle were ready and we all got this shot. All the guests got this shot right here. That's amazing. Look That's at like the penetrating eyes on that. Right. Rhinoceros, we see a couple of rhinoceros, although they're difficult to see. And what we ask all of our members on the photo safari, is to turn their GPS off for this picture on their camera. Because a lot of cameras will put the GPS coordinates embedded in the picture. We simply have them turned off, but it's a pleasure to see rhinos and they are definitely a threatened animal, but it's a pleasure to see them and, and interact with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love elephants? We have many people see wild elephants for the first time, Bill, and the elephants will oftentimes look back directly into their eye. And it's actually quite emotional for some people. Here we have a family unit. It's a mother, a six-year-old baby in the back, a four-year-old baby, and a two-year-old. Every two years, the mother has a calf or a baby. But you can see the middle elephant 
how it's gently caressing the baby, guiding it along this little water hole. Uh, very intimate picture showing animal behavior and everybody in the group got this shot again. This is what we're looking for, showing wonderful animal behavior like this. Let me ask you this, Jeff. So how long do the young elephants stay with mom? Most of them stay with the same herd as a family unit. And they're very close family units. Like this, you can see how close they are right here. Right, right. Beautiful. Another example, here's a mother with probably a six-year-old baby and a four-year-old. And you can tell by them touching their heads, they are very close with each other. The elephants have a very, very close family bond. You can tell, certainly very apparent in photos like these. We see a wide variety of birds, Bill. This happens to be a lilac breasted roller. And they're very, very common in the Kruger Park area. And they oftentimes will be right along the road looking for bugs. But look at the colors, the blues, the, the greens, the browns. It's an extraordinarily colored bird, a favorite for many people to photograph. I can see why. Jeff, th those are amazing photos. Absolutely amazing photos. Tell us a little bit about exactly what a typical photo trip of yours would entail and include. Sure. Well, the trip is eight nights and nine days, and we call it a photo safari, Bill, but really it's a photo slash cultural slash experience trip. Many of our participants have a cell phone, an iPhone. That's all they have for their camera. And oftentimes I'll take pictures and then give the pictures to the various people. But it's even though it's a photo safari, it's a loose so photo safari. And we have people that come along just to be a participant and hardly take a picture. But even for the hardcore animal nature wildlife photographer, this is the place to be. So it's just the right amount of time. We all meet in Johannesburg. It's typically a flight from Newark or Atlanta directly to Johannesburg. It's about a 15 and a half hour flight. You watch a couple of movies, have a couple of meals, rest. And when you get there, we drive about two and a half hours to our base camp right in the bush. It's a lodge. And we spend a day right there uh, exploring the area, taking photographs. Oftentimes, we'll join a veterinarian and go in a situation where he will tranquilize an animal for breeding purposes. And people love watching an animal getting tranquilized, finding it, tracking it, touching the animal all over and then putting that in a vehicle to be transported elsewhere for breeding purposes. We also go to an elephant rehab facility where they have trained elephants, where they talk to them like you talk to a dog, and they do exactly the commands that they want. Again, rehabbed elephants. There's a chance to actually ride on an elephant. We go to a gorge on a, with a boat, and it's the third largest gorge in the world. But we spent a number of days driving the roads of Kruger Park, driving the gravel roads, looking for the adventure of turning around the corner and having that elephant or that kudu or leopard or lion or baboon uh, in the area. So we're always, your head is like this all the time looking for animals. There are times when it could be a half an hour, you say, I haven't seen an animal for half an hour. In the next two hours, your head hurts from moving back and forth. Because again, we are in the wild, we're in the bush. It's the real thing. That's pretty amazing. And, and certainly an experience that you'll remember for your entire lifetime, that's for sure. Now, how big of a group do you typically take, Jeff? That's a great question, Bill. We have found that taking a group of about nine people maximum is the perfect size. Not too big, not too small. Each person has their own window seat. So we'll have a caravan of three or four vehicles. So as an example, if one group of people say, I really want to concentrate in elephants, and one group of people say, I want to look for birds, we all go out in the morning together. We might go at different paces looking for different things. We'll all meet back at lunch. Throughout the afternoon, we'll do our own things relatively in the same area. So each person, we can customize what their interest level is. And many people won't know what that level is until they get there. Some people say, I just love looking at elephants or zebras or giraffes. I want to see more of those, or I want to spend more time at a water hole because the group is small and personalized. We can offer that. 
Hey, hey, Jeff, what about the accommodations while people are back there? Good question. We live in thatched roof type chalets throughout the entire trip, all appointed very African. Most of the time we have individual rooms. And one question we get a lot, Bill, is what about restrooms? Well, I'm happy to say that about every two hours we stop at a modern restroom. And every evening we have our own modern restrooms as well, showers and everything modern about that restroom. It's also important to note that our trips are very safe and safety is our number one concern. And we are always thinking about safety. Some people ask Bill about medications or shots. Well, there are no shots required for going to South Africa, but we do encourage people taking anti-malaria medication. Even though it's the winter time, it's unlikely to see a mosquito, but it's possible. Many people go to their doctor and simply take a simple pill or pills for anti-malaria. Jeff, I'm pleased to hear that you guys have showers and those types of accommodations when you're over there. Do you have electricity at all? Or? Every night we have electricity for charging up cameras or computers or phones, lots of electricity. That helps. What, what about interaction with the locals? Well, we do some interaction, but what we encourage all of our members to bring along is a five pound bag of mixed candy for the kids. The local kids call them sweets. So we bring a bag, a five pound bag of mixed candy or Tootsie Rolls or something. And as we see young people, young kids along the road, we can give them to them and their smiles brighten up the day. We feel good about giving it to them and they just get a thrill out of getting American candy. Right, right. It's things that we take for granted that, that other people Every can't. day, yes. Yeah. That's pretty special. By traveling Africa, you have even a greater appreciation for being an American and what we have in America. And it really hits home when you come back home to say, I just experienced a country with conditions the way they are in many areas. Many areas are modern, but many areas are not like America. So you really appreciate America when you get back home. Reminder just how blessed we are. Truly blessed. What, what about the weather, Jeff? I mean, how should people dress when they're back there? Great question. Being in the winter time, Bill, sounds cold, but in the morning I'll be wearing a light fleece jacket or maybe a vest. And by 10 or 11 o'clock, we usually are wearing shorts or light pants or a polo type shirt. So the weather's are, weather is perfect. Uh, along the We spend a lot of time around a campfire with your favorite beverage, with the animal sounds in the background. And I'm wearing usually a light fleece jacket for that as well. But it's almost perfect weather conditions. So now how many trips a year do you do? I go there for about a month. And our trips are eight nights and nine days. And we have one or two groups. Uh, and it's an extraordinary experience, Bill. Most people or many people say it's one of the best trips of their life. But you have to be a nature person. You have to like animals and birds. You have to kind of like walk driving along a gravel road once in a while. We do a fair amount of driving. We take people up to the mountains and also the bush belt. So everything in between, there's a huge variety of topography that we go through. Now you're going to Africa in their winter, which is our summer, right? Exactly. Being the Southern hemisphere, they are opposite the winter summer category. So when you typically go, is it our, the month of July or? July and August we go. Those are the best months we have found. And also at that time of the year, Bill, most of the insects are gone, but equally important, Bill, most of the snakes are hibernating. So it's unlikely to see a snake. I get that question a lot. Yeah. Uh, we almost never see a snake. People don't want to see snakes. No, there's so some that's why we go in July and August. There's some nasty ones over there too. <laughs> I know. So, so Jeff, I, you, your groups are relatively small. I mean, you said about nine people, right? About nine people. And oftentimes a group or a family will, will come along or couples will come along. Sometimes it's all individuals. So we welcome anybody. Uh, as far as what level of photographer you must be, I think I mentioned before, if you have a iPhone or a 600 millimeter lens, or anything in between, we accommodate everything. And we do a lot of instruction of, on photography and composition, and we can help you a lot with your photography. Some people say, nope, I wanna put my iPhone up. 
and take a picture. What's interesting, Bill, is when somebody with an iPhone says, I want a full face of an elephant. Well, we can still do that in a safe distance with safety and consideration. But we are completely respectful for animal distances and we know what, how far to be or how close to be. Elephants are extraordinarily easy to read by their trunk and their ears and their eyes. So non-verbally, you can tell pretty much what an elephant is thinking by watching them. And we teach all of that. What, what about accessibility for people that have disabilities or elderly or so forth? How do you guys accommodate those? We accommodate everybody. We've had people who've been disabled. We've had people who can barely walk. We've had very senior people and we've had younger kids. So we have the experience to accommodate all levels. So if somebody that's in a wheelchair, for example, would like to go, you can accommodate them. We can accommodate them, yes. Wow. And we encourage anybody with any interest in Africa, South Africa to go. It's, it's an extraordinary, between the cuisine and the animals and the sunrise and the sunsets and the Milky Way above it, and meeting some of the local people hearing their accents, maybe even learning some Afrikaans words. It's an all-encompassing experience. Is there much of a language barrier with the locals at all? Or? Well, most of the people speak English, although Afrikaans is the main language, but most people speak English. What about the meals? Great question. Typically, the tradition of Africa is to have a light meal early in the morning before we go out. Then we'll have a late morning breakfast, if you will, or brunch, usually at a restaurant with a overlooking a huge, vast area looking at animals. And then throughout the afternoon during our photography and, and sightseeing. And then in the evening, come back to the room, get cleaned up, have a beverage of choice if that's what you want. And then usually a very nice appointed dinner, oftentimes around a fire. And we ask people about dietary needs. We ask people, are you a vegetarian? Would you want to try a wild game? The wild game there, Bill, is so extraordinarily good. Americans haven't tried it because you cannot import meat from Africa to here. But if a person likes a good steak, they will love the meat quality of a wild game. But we can accommodate everything from, again, from the vegetarian to the meat eater or whatever you have for your requirements, we can accommodate. You know, what's amazing is, I mean, you're taking people out in one of the last remaining real bush, if you will, on this earth. And, and pretty much anybody can go. It's not like you have to be in top physical shape or anything like that. Exactly. I mean, because we spend a lot of time in vehicles, so we can accommodate almost any body type or physical characteristics. Wow. You got relatively small groups. You're talking nine people. I would imagine that people have to book pretty far ahead of time. We typically book about eight to 12 months ahead of time. So right now, we are booking for July and August, 2023. Mm -hmm. And I love talking to people about, it's a passion of mine. I love talking to people about Africa. I welcome phone calls or emails or webs on our website. You can check out different things. Well, let's talk about that. So how do people get in contact with you if they're interested in learning more? Well, my website is Jeff Engel, E-N-G-E-L, Outdoors. So jeffengeloutdoors.com. I also have an Instagram account, Jeff Engel Outdoors, where I have a variety of photographs from Colorado and Africa and Wisconsin, or my phone number. I welcome people to call me as well on my personal phone at 414-254-6300, 414-254-6300. And again, Bill, I love talking to people and sharing the passion, the excitement of South Africa. Absolutely. One of these days, I'm going to join you on one. I'd love to have you there. You, you mentioned Colorado. I cannot let you go without asking you about the song that uh, you created, performed, taped, whatever the right language is, about Colorado. Thanks for asking. A little bit about that. Yeah. I spend a month in the fall living in the mountains of Colorado. I have a little cabin that I, I use. And I start in Estes Park photographing elk for about 12 days, exclusively just elk. Then I migrate down to the Telluride, Ridgeway, Ure area. And that's, I, that's where I spend every day, all day from morning till dark, taking calendar pictures, animal pictures, stream mountain pictures, snow-capped mountain pictures. So when I was in Colorado, 
this last time, I got inspired to write a song. So I got in my studio and I wrote this song called Colorado Calling. And then I went to a network of friends. As an example, the singer of the song is the same singer and voice who sings the national anthem at the Milwaukee Brewers, the Milwaukee Bucks, or the Green Bay Packers. I have several friends who are accomplished guitarists, and they love to be participating in the song. And as I wrote the song, we had collaboration. I said, okay, guys, here's the basic song. What's your input? What instruments should we put here or put there? A good friend of mine loves playing the harmonica. So we all met in the studio. Then we went to the University of Wisconsin Whitewater Choir Department and had them do oohs and ahs throughout the song just for some color. So we put all this together in 32 tracks. And it was a pretty good project to do this. And the song that ended up from this is called Colorado Calling. So I would invite your viewers to go to YouTube and look under Jeff Engel, E-N-G-E-L, and then Colorado Calling. And a lot, in fact, all the photographs behind the song, Bill, are photographs I happen to take. So I would invite everybody to look at that song, listen to the song, and enjoy the song. Yeah, no, the, the, I, I, and I, I've done that, as you know, right? And, and, yes, thank you. The, the song itself is phenomenal. And when you lay the photos, you know, across the song as a background, it's, it's pretty impressive. I really enjoy it. I recommend that people do go check that out. Thank you. Again, the song was a true collaboration with many good friends who happened to be ultra talented. So it was a great, great project to work on. I'm very, very grateful for everybody's help. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, I, I really enjoyed talking with you today. Love looking at your photos. Glad to be able to share those with our viewers. Anything else that you'd like to touch upon? Well, Bill, thank you. If a person ever thought about going to South Africa, it is truly an amazing once in a lifetime experience. And we would love to be able to talk to you and give you ideas, talk about your personal needs, what, you'd, what your expectations might be, and give you further details on the trip. And we just, again, love talking to people and showing them the African bush, especially that elephant looking back into your eye. Or that leopard. That's the one that really got my attention. That's for sure. There's a good chance of seeing something just like that. Wow. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing just a few of your phenomenal images and truly a trip of a lifetime and, and something that you and I have talked about doing together for quite some time. Yes. We haven't done yes. that yet, but I would really like to do that with you. That's, it's on my bucket list for sure. And all of us want to thank you for your passion and dedication, what you are doing for wildlife in California. Your, your passion comes through, and we as nature people need people like you. So thank you for what you do. Oh, well, thank you for those kind words. And I'd like to thank our viewers for tapping in today on The Outdoor View. Check us out on our website at www.theoutdoorview.org, on our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. 